stay undercover. Crazy Dog Audio Theatre presents Infidel by Roger Gregg. Our story of the Knights Sir Hugh of Beauvais is based upon the actual events of the Fifth Crusade, which began in the year 1217. Episode 2, A Bishop Storms Damietta. We'll hide here till dark. Then we'll cross the lines. Yes? Yes. Yes, I know the way. We'll get back. We'll get back. Don't worry. I said I'll get you back. And I will. I'll get you back. Yield, little brother. What? Pledge yourself. I... I have. Will Philip's brother prove as noble? Is he too a soldier for Christ? I am, but not... A knight beyond reproach. Whose heart is pure. Yes. You're not like your brother. I'm not. It's in your eyes. What is? False doctrines are but another sign of what must come to pass. No, that's not... God's will. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers. Just a little unknown town in the Holy Land. Yes. Egypt, when we first arrived. So long ago, remember? I was in the square, waiting for my brother. 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 Are you all right? Yes, Sir Knight. Perhaps I can help. Oh, would you? Yeah, it's very important that I bring this water. Well, I, I am to meet my brother here. I see. Then you must wait. Huh? Hold, hold on. How far have you to go with this? Oh, not far. Your brother will not miss you. Uh, just down the next lane. The, the, the two of us can carry it with ease. All right. Thank you, good sir. God bless you. Uh, I, I think if we lift it from the base... On either side. Uh, yes. Ready? Yes, I have it. On, th on three. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. Well, you have it. Uh, wait, just let me get my fingers on. There. All right, lead on. Ah, oh, yes. And it, yes, this is much better. You're one of those brothers, aren't you? Yes. There was a group of you on our ship. On deck once. I listened to your leader. Francis. Yes, he was very... Uh, different. Not at all like the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. You all right? Yes, it, it was slipping. I have it now. Here, turn here. It's, it's just down here. In here. This, this is the ruin. It's our hospital. Throw here. <laughs> Is this far enough? Yes. Let's set this down by the table. Yes, sir. All right. We're just setting up. We have a way to go. These people here. Yes. They're infidels. It's not surprising, is it? No, no, but it's just that I... We... We, we were told not to go near them. You fear the fever. Fever? It's sweeping through the country. I see. And they're hungry. Their harvest has been taken. They've lost everything. Some are wounded. Some are soldiers. And there's a great many orphans. The rich spoils of war. Spoiled? Isn't that why you took up the sword? No, I, I came... I came because we were called. 
Called? Who called you? Our Lord called us here. To, to fight. Our Lord? Yes. What if you knew that that child was our Lord? <laughs> no, uh, no, please, I'm our sorry. Our child I... wants what? I'm sorry, I don't understand. I will give it to him. I, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. Yes. Yes, that's... That's when things started to shift. Then, what I was seeing didn't fit. It didn't fit. You! You! There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Philip. Uh, are you all right? Yes. I just... You were supposed to wait in the square for me. You can't just go off on your own. Not here. We must watch out for each other. Yes, you're right, Philip. I'm sorry. Now, while you were sightseeing, I managed to sell his carcass for 40 ducats. 40? Is that all? It was the best I could do. How much money do we have? Oh, 240, maybe 250 ducats. Food, please. Love of Jesus, please. Be off. Go on before I draw my sword. Food, please, in Jesus' name. Here, here, take one of these coins. How dare you use the name of Jesus? Here. Take this one. Uh, hey! Hey, 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 come back! Thief! Come back! Quick, pick up the coins! There are ducats everywhere. Damn it! Quick, pick them up! There's some over here. This cursed place is full of scum! Thieves! I Paul, I told you not to give them anything. It is my money equally, Philip. Am I not your elder brother? Yes. If you give a coin to every mangy cur who bakes for food, we'd be no sooner better off than they are. But the man was hungry, Philip. The man was a thief! Sometimes I can't understand you, Hugh. One moment we're mustering our money together to buy you a new war horse, the next you're giving it all away. I didn't give it all away. To pagans! I'm sorry, but we're supposed to give to the poor, aren't we? Yes, our poor, not theirs. You've been listening too much to those damn brothers. Look, I'm sorry, Hugh, but how are we supposed to arrive in our camp as befitting proper knights with one horse between the two of us? How will we look? Fairly stupid? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, you must put your faith in what I say. Otherwise, we are... What was that? Sweet Lord above, look you. Greetings, Christian knights. God be with you. Uh, and with you, sir. You lads seem distressed. We are, sir knight. We have just been robbed. Ah, well here. Are these your coins? Yes, I believe so. Uh, how did you happen upon them? I found them on the body. Body? No. You are both new here. Indeed we are. We're arrived on the Venetian transports. Ah, you came with that Francis. I don't know any... He, he, he was on board. You're not we... one of his followers, are you? I have spent uh, time... No. No, sir, we certainly are not. Good. I am told that fanatic used to be a decent knight. Now he goes about with that idiotic following of brothers preaching peace. That's the last thing we need here is a troublemaker like that. Of course. Well, since you are both new here... You have much to learn. Indeed, sir. We are in... What is this? My, my sword, sir. Yes? Well, what is it doing at your feet? I set it down when picking up our coins. Yes, our money was scattered everywhere. Well, hear that. If you wish to stay alive here, never let go of your sword. Of course. Yes. And never give alms to the beggars here. They think nothing of theft or murder. They are unclean. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I understand. In fact, I was just well, telling good. my... I chanced upon that scum as he was fleeing down the next lane. I tried stopping him, and when he refused, I cut the thief down. How did you know he was a thief? He was running like a thief. And you were right. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes. Praise be to God. Once you've been here for a time, you'll see for yourselves just what we're up against. Who, may I ask... Has God's providence worked through this day? I am Marshal Rico of the Order of the Knights Templar. A Templar? Yes. You've heard of us? Who hasn't heard of the fiercest knights in all of Christendom? I am Philip of Beauvais, and this is my young brother Hugh. It is an honor to meet you, sir. Yes. Well, God be with you both. Uh, uh, Marshal Rico, perhaps you might advise us. One of our horses has just died. 
Ah, so now it seems that both brothers must share the one horse. Yes. Then you will find that God shall be doubly provident to you this day. When you reach the Christian camp, seek me out among the Templar banners. May God be with you. And also with you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. We shall look for you. Did you see his sword, Hugh? Yes, I saw it. Ah, Saragossa, inset with rubies. It must weigh over a stone, and yet he wields it like... like the wind. I've never seen such strength. Covered in blood. What are you saying? His sword was covered in blood. Yes! Not enough to buy a loaf of bread. What? What the beggar took. A pittance. Cost him his life. Serves him right. Philip, how can you say it serves him right? You heard Marshal Rico. He was starving. The people here are heathens, even invoking the name of Jesus as if he knew what it meant. Hugh, can you imagine what that massive Saragossa blade must have done? What? Come on, let's go and examine the body. Philip, I have no desire to see a dead body. Come on, Hugh. Look, it's over here. Come on. Dead body. Left to swell in the sun till it bursts. And the maggots fester. What? No. No, I wasn't talking about you. You're not yet... Look, I'm sorry. What? No. No, there's no time to bury the dead. Not here. There's, there's too many of you. Besides, it's no job for a night. <laughs> Carrion crow. The jackals. The maggots. Maybe they're put here so that we... So that you and I, we... We don't have to keep seeing what we've done. And can just... Forget everything. Even our names. Marshal Rico, sir. Ah! The two brothers on one horse. Come in! Come in! I was just reviewing our strategy. Let me acquaint you with our situation here. Look at this board. A chessboard? Yes. It is laid out to show our battle plan, see? For months now, we have been locked in a stalemate. But, having finally secured the peninsula, we have castled ourselves off from assault. Like so. And at the same time, cut off the Sultan's main army here, from Damietta here. Now we lay siege. We strangle them slowly. Soon we shall storm the walls, and the town will be ours. All that remains now are the bloody siege towers. Why the delay, Marshal Rico? Our delay, my friend, is due to these buffoons. The kings? Yes, certain of them, and I won't mention any names, are sadly lacking in their duties as Christian monarchs. Some of them do not seem to realize what peace is. Peace? Yes, peace. All good kings understand that peace is the time used to prepare for war. The more spent preparing for war, the less likely war will be. No one dares attack a strong and well-prepared army. Yes, and if war should break out, you can resolve it quickly from a position of strength. Yes, well said, young Philip. But surely, Sir Rico, all these kings have arrived with vast armies. But the infidel, too, has a vast army. He has spent the last eleven years of peace preparing for war. He is no fool. Some of our kings have meanwhile failed to levy the heavy taxes necessary to finance a full-scale war. They do not seem to realize that war is no longer a simple matter of a, of a knight on a horse. There are nowadays all manner of advances in armor, moving towers, him, Engenel, rams, trebuchet, new forms of Greek fire which cannot be extinguished. Many do not know this. But there are learned men paid by their kings to do nothing else but devise ever more deadly weapons. I, I have read of such men, Marshal. <sighs> and have you also read that the infidel is far more advanced than we are? No, sir. Hmm. I have seen them in this campaign accomplish things with fire and poisons which entirely dumbfound our wiser scholars. 
Marshal, sir, you mentioned a horse. What about it? Can we see one? <laughs> there is no rush. Take your time. There is nearly twenty to choose from. Twenty? You possess such stables? Of course. We Templars are prepared. The Templars are dedicated solely to waging war upon the infidel. And to that end alone. Unlike that fool Francis and his rabble of peace-loving brothers, we Templar Brotherhood have taken solemn vows never to retreat from the enemy and never to defile the sign of the cross of our true faith, not even under torture. Torture? Yes, torture. <laughs> oh, the infidel derives great pleasure in torturing their Christian prisoners, especially Templars. They have crucified some of us in the manner of Christ. Others they have torn apart limb from limb to force us to deny the sign of the cross. Many of my dearest brothers have been martyred. And I swear that when the day of battle arrives, with my own sword, I shall avenge their deaths ten times over. When that great day comes, Marshal Rico, may I be at your side. You wish to be among the Templars in battle? I do. You've had training? Yes. Very well, let us see. Here, take this dagger. Go on. Go on. Marshal, I... I... Now, go on. Philip. Lunge at me. Don't. Come now. All right. <laughs> Drop the blade, Philip. Drop it. No. Never. No. <laughs> <laughs> Very good! I like your spirit. Perhaps you should spend some time with us, Philip, for we Templars are a military elite. We accept only young men of the strictest Christian virtues and superior strength. These things only come with much training. Then I wish to undertake such training. <laughs> Very well. And you, Sir Hugh? I... I... Wish to have more time to seek God's guidance. Hmm, yes. Meantime, please accept these medallions of the Order of the Templars. They have been blessed and will protect you in battle. Oh, thank you, Marshal Rico. <sighs> Look at the insignia. Two brother knights upon one horse. The sign of the Templars. Do you now see God's provident hand in leading me to you earlier today? Yes. Yes, it is surely God's will. Deus Lavolt! Deus Lavolt? It is God's will. <laughs> it is God's will. <laughs> it's getting dark. How would you like a bedtime story? Yes? Very well. Are you comfortable? Good. We'll begin. Every day, we kept up the bombardment of Damietta. And every day, the defenders hoped for food which never came. Day after day, we wore them down, letting hunger and disease do its grim work, until we were ready. The evening before the final attack, Cardinal Pelagius gathered us together. He read to us from the Book of Revelations and gave us a final sermon. He liked sermons. You, gathered here, are God's chosen army. For we are fulfilling the prophecy of the Scriptures. My brothers in Christ, these are the last days. We ride beneath the banner of Christ. And tomorrow, when we attack, Jesus shall don a cloak dipped in blood. And from his mouth shall come a great sword with which he will smite down the nations of infidels. The Bible promises that the false prophet of the infidel will be hurled into the fires of hell. And every infidel, to the very last, shall be smoted down by our righteous sword. And all the birds of the earth shall gather together and gorge themselves on the flesh of the dead. Hear them! Hear them! Yes, 
They gather already. This is God's word. This is God's will. Deus Lemos! Deus Lemos! We advanced as the sun rose on that cool November morning. The siege towers were grappled to the walls. The tunnels we had dug underneath set on fire, bringing down the walls above them as they caved in. The wall was breached and we swarmed the town. But what met our eyes was not what we had expected. There was no battle. The Templars began searching house to house. The other troops began to do the same. Home after home was broken into. The men emerging with everything that they could lay their hands on. There was nobody in charge. Fighting began between thieving and marauding gangs of French and English troops. It, it, it was all falling apart. I rushed ahead, trying not to lose sight of Philip. He was up front with Marshal Rico and, and the other Templars. It was madness. All discipline had broken down. Then, fires began to break out. It spread everywhere and everything started to burn. Looting, brawling, even killing each other in the free-for-all. I ran on straight ahead. And as I emerged from the smoke-filled lane, I came into the square and froze. At first, I could not believe what I was seeing. The Templars had finally found them. The survivors had all sought sanctuary in one of their mosques, maybe, maybe three hundred or so. Women, old people and children, all of them already dying from the fever. None of them were soldiers. Soldiers? <laughs> no. And no, they were too smart. They had already fled. No. Just the poor were left, herded together in the square, surrounded by Templars, their swords drawn, and like threshers mowing a field of wheat, they began swinging their swords like scythes back and forth, slaughtering them. And I... I... I just stood there as that circle grew tighter and tighter and their screams grew fainter. Old people, children clinging to their mothers, the blood, so much blood, drenching the white tunics of the Templars, tunics emblazoned with the cross of Jesus. And there, with them, was Philip, my own brother, his sword striking with the rest. <laughs> to run, just, just run, anything, anything, just, just get away. You, brother, where are you going? Stay with me! Stay with me! I ran, I ran out, out, out beyond the walls, and I kept going, I kept going, just running, running anywhere, on and on, running out into the desert, out. And then I, I, I don't remember anything except, except waking up in chains. A prisoner. It's getting dark.
You have been listening to episode two of Infidel by Roger Gray. Starring Anthony Brophy, David Murray, Morgan Jones, Paul B. Lennox, Dermot McGinnis, Raymond Keane, Roger Gregg, Georgina Miller, Louis Gregg, Isaac Jones, and Aidan Vaughan. Studio and location recording by Mark McGrath. Location recordings at Rally House, McCroom, County Cork. Infidel was written, directed and produced by Roger Gregg. Find out more at crazydogaudiotheatre.com. Yes.